Um, so I'm Rebecca Goldstein, and um, as Owen mentioned, I was brought up as a very good Jewish girl, um, and um, in fact, uh, come from uh, a very orthodox family, um, so the kind in which um, uh, ambition among girls was not even a problem to conceive of. I mean, it was inconceivable. And uh, my path was pretty clear. Sorry, which, which way was inconceivable? That it was a problem? That a, or that that a girl just... could even, that they, my parents even had to deal with an ambitious girl. I mean, it was inconceivable right. to them. It was just, I mean, uh, the most, um, you know, perhaps I would go to college and become a kindergarten teacher, perhaps, you know. But um, I, they allowed me, strangely enough, to go to the public library. We were very, very poor. We, I, we didn't own any books, but uh, before the Sabbath, every Friday, we would get our reading material, and they uh, allowed me free range. And I got a book um, between second and third grade in the summer called um, Our Friend the Atom, which rocked my little world. It just rocked my world. And I was like, what? You know, the world out there is nothing the way it seems to be. There are, the, there are no colors, there are no, you know, it's all, and there are these heroes. They're called scientists, they're called <laughs> physicists, and somehow they're able to get out there and they're able to describe the way the world really is. And I, my greatest hope was that I would someday meet a scientist and be able to talk to them <laughs> and ask them, how they did this, how they could possibly get outside their own minds and discover the real nature of reality. So it, but you know, uh, then I was just reading as much as I could about these things and hoping that I would meet a scientist. Um, the, the next thing I read that, that rocked my, my little world was uh, probably about 12 years old. <clears throat> my parents still hadn't caught on to the fact that the library was the most dangerous place in the world. Um, that uh, was, um, Bertrand Russell's Why I Am Not a Christian. Oh. And it's so good, it works on Jews. I mean, it's such a <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> That's why I want her to <laughs> Exactly. So, uh, you know, and for those who say that people in this room and beyond who write atheist books are just, you know, preaching to the choir that it doesn't make a difference. False, 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 you know, especially for young people uh, who, who are asking these questions. Uh, you know, that, that, that article, uh, yeah, it just it completely changed my mind. And I was going to get to college one way or the other. When I did get to college, um, you know, it was, again, philosophy was not something to major in. It was, it was known in my world as very, very dangerous and subversive. Um, so, and besides, I wanted to be not just to meet a scientist, but then at that point to be a scientist and to be a physicist. And I um, started out with that intention. Um, and it was quantum mechanics. It was quantum mechanics that did it. I kept going to my professor and um, asking him, uh, you know, what does it mean? What is it saying about our world? And he, did, and he was of the school of just shut up and and calculate. And um, he, then he finally said to me, I was at Columbia, um, why don't you go talk to one of the philosophers? Uh, they asked this sort of question. So I went and I spoke to Sidney Morgan Besser. <laughs> <laughs> and we had about an eight hour conversation. We went out to dinner. We spoke late into the night. And at the end, he convinced me that I should go into philosophy of science. Um, and I I live to forgive him for that. <laughs> um, but I, and then I, you know, I went on, I went to Princeton, I was very, and I wanted to do foundations of quantum mechanics. That was the thing that had gotten me interested in philosophy. When I got to Princeton at that time, there really was nobody to work with uh, on that. Uh, the person in philosophy of science was Carl uh, uh, Hempel, Peter Hempel, wonderful man, but he was not willing to work on foundations of, of quantum mechanics, and I was, I was floundering, and then I read uh, Tom Nagel. Tom Nagel was there, and Tom, I read uh, Tom Nagel's "What Is It Like to Be a Bat," and I, 
this was a problem that had really bothered me. How does that, you know, I was a confirmed materialist, but how was it that it feels like something to be this brain? Why does it feel like something? And, and here, you know, and he was putting it into a language that, uh, you know, I appreciated. I thought he was making the problem quite clear. Um, and I and I did work with him. I now look back at it and I see that my move away from religion has come in stages, and that was yet another stage uh, in in the process. Um, anyway, I got the doctorate, became a philosopher. I don't know how I became a novelist, to tell you the truth. You know, it still surprises me. I was always thinking metaphilosophically. Philosophy seems to me such a strange subject. I kind of wandered into it because of problems and trying to interpret uh, physics. And what has so impressed me about philosophy and philosophical conversations are the intuitions that people bring to bear on philosophical core intuitions, deep down intuitions about free will or about uh, the objectivity of moral judgments or s certain things that they are unwilling uh, to forego. And they'll change e everything around them, but keep those core intuitions. And so that when you get down to it, uh, you know, you can make a lot of headway with people who share your intuitions and not so much with people who don't share your intuitions. And that, that Mm -hmm. Aspect of it had the character aspect of it. The fact that um, you know, in philosophy, we're probably either deal dealing with proto scientific questions. We haven't yet reached the science, and so we're just kind of floundering. Or maybe they're really not empirically resolvable. Um, you know, that is something that's open to me. I don't know what these philosophical questions are, but whatever they are, they leave a lot of room for one's entire character to kind of bubble up and provide one with intuitions. Um, so that aspect has interested me so much. And there was no place to deal with that in philosophy. And it drove me to write these philosophical novels uh, as a way of trying to show how character is in play in these philosophical intuitions. That's the best explanation, rationalization I, I can give for why I sometimes write these uh, these philosophical novels, and you know, and sometimes go back and write other things. Um, oh, well, I, I, I published my first novel, The Mind Body Problem, um, when I was very young, and basically ruined my philosophical career with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was like, uh, you know, when in the day when I, you know, when I had entered in, it was hard enough to be a young woman in philosophy of science, you know, always the only woman. Now at least there's somewhat another woman, but they're <laughs> always the only woman in the room, especially, yeah. yeah, when it was, you know, anything philosophy of science, philosophy of math was also one of my major, and mathematical logic, one of my major interests. Um, so, but you know, and then you publish a novel, a sexy novel, you might as well go around with a sign saying, I am, I am not serious, serious, a frivolous creature. So, you know, anyway, uh, that, well, that's how I ruined my career. And um, what am I most, what can I, uh, what am I interested in having my mind changed about? Um, so many things. Um, philosophy of math is a major issue for me, uh, and it is the kind of uh, thing that sticks in the is that thing's craw, the craw, <laughs> very bad with these, uh, Me too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the big bad bug. Yes, the yes, the, the, no the math, you know, I wrote a book on Gödel's incompleteness theorems. Uh, Gödel seemed to think that uh, his theorems maybe implied is too strong a term, but strongly suggested um, mathematical realism. I'm quite convinced by that. I would like to be unconvinced by that. Um, I'd also like to be unconvinced of uh, my view that we that philosophical issues 
can't be resolved. And we're basically coming at it with these, you know, with our whole world being, with our whole inner life, um, uh, and that they are, you know, deep in our core. I would like to be able to talk to somebody who has very different <coughs> intuitions than I do and either convince them of mine or, or be convinced by theirs and uh, see that their progress can actually be made in philosophy. I'm not convinced it can be.